Hey everybody, this is Know Your Mac on YouTube.com, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create your own icon and using that icon on another folder, on another file, whatever you want. So this will be a two-part tutorial. Um, on this part, the one you're watching right now, I'm going to be showing you how to create your own custom icon, and then in part two, I will be showing you how to use that icon on another file or folder. So first let's start out with some examples. Everything in our dock is basically a custom icon. These applications without their custom icons would be looking like all a sheet of paper with a little compass forming an A because that's the default um, look of an application. But of course that has been changed. Over here we have a web archive with a different icon. So, to create your own custom icon, you're going to need, first, an application where you can draw a picture in, or painting, whatever you want, or you can even edit a picture, or just open a picture. And you also need a photo editing software that can save in PNG. So, I'm going to use something that can save and in PNG and can also paint in known as Photoshop. Let me open that up. And while that's loading up, now, as you know, if you right click and go to show view options, you could change the size of your, app, of your applications. Now, the largest size is 128 by 128, and that's in pixels. So that's how big you're going to want to make your icon. So this way, it could be adapted for either smaller or larger icons. So once that's loaded up, you're going to just go to File, New, and make a simple... 128 by 128 file. There we have it. Very boring, very plain. Now, for your first icon, you're going to want to do something very, very simple just because it's your first and you want to get the feel of how it works. As you can see, very simple. There we go. Just pretend I just want a question mark. Now here's where you really have to make sure you remember this. If we save this, all of our icons are going to have a white background on them. But as you can see, just from this Mac HD, that doesn't have a white background. So you're going to have to take your magic wand in Photoshop or a paint bucket tool and make sure you delete that background. So that it should look like something like that. So that's basically the finished product. And you're just going to go to File, Save As. I'm going to save mine as Icon. And make sure you save it as a PNG. If you don't save it as a PNG, it's going to have that white box, even though we deleted it. So now I'm going to quit out of Photoshop because we have our icon. There it is. Simple question mark icon. Now, if we skip to using that icon, it's going to have that white box. So before we do anything, I'm going to open up a program called Fast ICNS in Spotlight. and it looks like this right here it's available for free at the Apple website it's a great application it's very simple it looks like a rotating cube and all you have to do when you want your icon is drag it there and it deletes all that white for us so that saves all the trouble of having to go to Apple one of 
one of Apple's Xcode development tools which creates an ICO file for us. Now the reason why I like doing it this way rather than that way is because first of all a lot of people don't have Leopard so they don't have the development tools and second of all I think that this way is a little bit easier. So now that we have our rotating cube with our little icon on it, I'm going to double click and it gives us four options to save it. We have resource fork of a file, of a folder, ICNS, and PNG image. Now we definitely can't use PNG image because that's going to have the white box again. Now we're not going to use ICNS because this is for personal use and ICNS is usually used when you're uploading it to the Apple website. We're not going to use resource fork of a file because we don't really want to be opening the file and typing in it. So we're going to choose of a folder. We're going to save that to, my, to the desktop. Put our fast ICNS and there we have it, our icon. Now stay tuned for part two and I will be showing you how to use that icon and changing the icons of other applications, of other files, and of other folders. Thank you for watching and I hope you subscribe.